Last time on Let's Play Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. The Aurora unit is corrupted and requires repair. Opening maintenance level hatch. It looks like the Steam bots are not particularly happy by the fact that we're trying to save the Aurora unit. But yeah, okay then. Let's upload the Aurora unit's vaccine. So this will allow us to um, talk to the Aurora unit and then... And then we can... So vaccine successfully uploaded, all phase and corruption level at 0.0%. So we can finally get round to trying to get rid of that energy shield around the Leviathan. So, let's go back and talk to the Aurora unit. Oh no! There we go. And this creates an interesting structure. Call attention to the fact that there was an upgrade in this room and it turns out to be right there. Here we have ourselves a missile expansion. Veronian containment unit. Nuclear substance is present. Handle with extreme caution. Okay, that. Okay, then. Let's go to the cannon over the other side. And on the other side, we have ourselves an energy tank. Very nice. Hello, Jedi person here, and welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. But we haven't got a lot of time to spare. Our ship is going to be destroyed if we're not careful. I've gone back to the save point to save near the Aurora unit, but we cannot waste any more time. So I'm going to speed up and play music as we travel all the way back to our ship. Well, that didn't go very well. You must be accompanied by a parent or guardian to ride the lightning. Okay, when you get into this room... Ship priority status alert. Warning. Hull integrity is compromised. Armor damage is critical. There should be a scannable enemy in here. No, not the one I was thinking of. Anyway, we should deal with these guys first. Maybe they appear afterwards. Anyway, that's very welcome energy rip restoration right there because um, we're going to need all our energy really. And we're also going to need quite a few missiles. Yes. The upcoming fight actually requires missiles. So, when you step through this door, we had a window view earlier and... Oh boy!
Yeah, that doesn't look good. I say we try and get down there and stop him. Sadly, our good friend Gore, one of the kindest bounty hunters you could ever hope to meet, has gone to the dark side and has now completely the opposite. Just in time. Here we go then, here's the boss battle against Gore! Shield repels all weapon fire, powered by a unit on his back. Gore's energy shield is capable of repelling all weapon fire, but the back mounted generator is exposed to attack. Overloading the generator could expose the well protected critical systems behind his battle armour. Gore's arsenal is considerable. Plasma based beam weapons, attack claws, and a multi missile system are at the cyborg's disposal in the battle. These battle systems can be combined and fired at once as a devastating alpha strike. Target is also capable of a high speed rapid attack, although this is potentially dangerous if performed over a slippery surface. That last thing is the key to beat him, so Gore will charge and ride in the arena at you. You want to get behind one of the pieces of fuel gel, fire an ice missile at the uh, frozen fuel gel, so that when he charges at you, he slips over, just like that, exposes his weak point. Then you want to charge him to hyper mode, and punish him for it. Actually, well, no, wait, never mind. We still get into hyper mode anyway, but yeah. So the shield's down. Yeah, so you actually damage him by hitting the front because of the arm, but yeah. And the shield's back up again, so unfortunately, um. We cannot use um, ice missiles on hyper mode, and also we're getting dangerously close to getting corrupted here. Right. Oh, dang it. Right, so let's just freeze this right here because then we can get lined up. Or not. He destroyed the fuel gel pool. Right, we managed to get. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, right. There we go, that's a lot better. Get some of our missiles back because, um, well, we have 75 so we're, it's funny because we barely even needed the missiles. Can we get by the back of him? That's all that's corrupted. Oh, there we go, we managed to get his weak point without even needing to um, get rid of the shield. Okay, when he gets to this point, the strategy is going to change. So when that appears, now you need to transform to a morph ball. And now what we need to do is use the boost ball to boost underneath him. Scanning him will reveal his new um, attack pattern. That's not it. He also has a new sweeping attack, but if we boost underneath him, that's going to expose him. And then we can go back into hyper mode. Too early. Wait, wait, we need to avoid these attacks before we do anything else. Okay, I did the wrong thing there. Boost underneath. Now nah, that reveals the weak spot.
Of course, with seven energy attacks, it's quite easy to do. Feel free to use hyper mode as much as you want because it's quite easy to, in order to do so. Anyway, we're still only down to half the health, so there's still quite a bit of this boss battle to go. Okay, he's got the boost for that again. Camera angle change that on, brother. Okay, well, we're down to three energy tanks, so hopefully we can do this. Come on. There we go. Charge shot, maybe that'll help as well. I'd better use charge shots, but I think that's it. No, he just keeps on going. He's going into hyper mode himself now. Oh, I didn't want to get out of hyper mode, dang it. Come on. I would say we should to do this, but Gore is a lost cause, I feel. He's just turned to the dark side. Whereas Rendus was a solemn cause, Gore is more out, and we have beaten Gore. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we could not save Gore from his corruption. Rundus is dead, and Zyra Gore is also dead. Both corrupted by Phazon, both forced to fight against us, and now both of them are dead. We did leave a trinket, we did get a memorial for Rundus, so now I think it's only fair to do the same for Gore. Let's pick up Gore's last gift to us. That's right, we have the Plasma Beam now! Fire the Plasma Beam with A. The Plasma Beam is capable of melting certain metals. You might be wondering now, so, um... Well, Cybus will call the ship back so you can save now if you want. The ship is still slightly damaged from Gore's frantic antics, but um, it has an auto repair system in it. So we should be fine in the long run, but anyway, you might be wondering. With no beam selection weapon, how do you fit the plasma beam? How do you set the plasma beam as your main weapon? Well, you already have it as your main weapon. Yes, the, the plasma beam replaces the power beam as the standard weapon and has the same fire rate as the power beam. It's a considerable upgrade on, the, on our previous beam and it's going to become so much handy in the future, especially since like the boost ball, it also gained new functionality and the stuff it can do. So, the Plasma Beam is similar to that in the, the original Metroid Prime, except it has another functionality and we're going to be needing to use that to restore the Aurora unit. But before we do that, there is an object you may be seeing flying by in here that I really want to scan. If it'll come around at any point. Here we go. This is a transportation drone. Transports basic supplies to and from various areas of Skytown. Class D transportation drones are used for the distribution of supplies and materials across all of Skytown. Upon activation, each unit is assigned a set position along a transit route that it will use exclusively. The constant upkeep of the facility requires that they continuously deliver their shipments to their destinations at a steady pace. So, fun fact! These transportation drones are part of one of the biggest speedrunning skips in the game. There is a speedrunning glitch you can use to jump off your ship and then jump onto these transportation drones, which will ride you all the way up to the other side. Hang on. With the rear remote actually focus, ride you up to the other side along here. From there, you can jump along the edges slightly, glitch out of bounds, and get past the um, hyperball blockage. 
This is extremely useful going forward because it means that we, it means it means that you could basically skip the planet Brio if you're going for an 80% run. This uh, was demonstrated in Speed Errors Archive, and I'll actually link a video in the uh, description below to see, to show you just exactly what I mean. But yeah, this plasma beam, really nice to have. Also, the flat like in Petro Prime One, the plasma beam can melt objects. So. Just like that. Now, since we have the ship back, I believe we can save. Gunship has been damaged, unable to fly in its current state. Water repair function is initiated, so we can actually leave the planet just yet. What we need to do now is go back to the Aurora unit. So I'm going to do just that. Um, obviously, now that we have a new upgrade in the plasma beam, though, there are a few things we can do, but um, I will point those out if necessary along the way back. So actually, I believe, actually, if we go to this room now, I believe the scan is here, right? Yes, here we go. We have them. Um, these are Elysian Shriek Bats, mechanical variant of a Shriek Bat that will explode on contact. Like all Shriek Bats, the Elysian Shriek Bat will dive bomb any creature that wanders too close and detonate on contact. However, these are not actual creatures, but machines made to mimic their real-life counterparts. Designed centuries ago, their original purpose is unknown. They now roam the hovering facilities over Elysia, often in small flocks. So, yeah, these are just the street bats as usual, so just shoot them all, get rid of them with our new plasma beam. Mechanical street bats, who would have figured? Use the grapple beam to launch over, and it's pretty much the same way we came before, so. Sky Time doesn't make you do a loop back on yourself to go all the way back to your ship. But now we can progress onwards. Ah, oh, come on, I keep messing up on that one. And again. Something I remembered actually is that if you sh keep shooting while you're on these, you might be able to catch some of those um, enemies before they even register and re require you to actually point at the screen in order to shoot at. Anyway, we're going to go through this room right here. And the plasma beam is going to rip right through these tin bots, leave them in a burning heap of goo and plasma mess. Oh yeah, something you may notice. When we beat Gore, we got a fire-based weapon. When we beat Rundus, we got an ice-based weapon. Gandrada! Gandrada's transformations included electricity. The three hunters in this game are designed to represent the three main elements you see often in RPGs of sorts, like fire, ice and electricity. Funny how that, that works out actually. Well, the plasma beam required doesn't mean we need, even need to use the grapple to on these anymore. That's convenient. Okay, so when you get over to this side, there's an even quicker route back. So we now we have the plasma beam, we can melt these. Unfortunately, you didn't really get much for melting these, uh, just to show that they are there. However, if we melt this right here... It reveals an object. This is... Cannon is ready for use. Enter the opening to automatically initiate the firing sequence. So this is going to be a shortcut back to um, where we need to go. This will skip the steam bot barracks area, so we don't need to go back through that area anymore. As you can see, we're over here now. So, let's go back and repair the Aurora units. Okay, we're back in the Aurora unit chamber. 
And now let's go and repair the Aurora Unit's network. Any steam bots waiting to greet us? Nope. So, let me introduce you a new mechanic. Not that. Not that either, but... What I mean to show you here is this right here. This is a um, special board. Use the plasma beam. So what you use now is you point the Wii remote at the bit so you can use the plasma beam. Hold down the A button and your aim is to very carefully join these two up with each other. That will reactivate the Aurora unit in this instance. Now, these are relatively simple boards. So and actually you'll probably expect some more complicated patterns to be prevalent later on. But this is a brand new functionality for the plasma beam, which is really nice that they added this. In fact, because you won't notice the theme by now, with the boost ball, they added new functionality to an already existing power-up. So as a result, we've had as a result we have Retro found a good way to include old power-ups but use them in new inventive ways. That helps to really keep things fresh, in my opinion. Anyway, this is the hardest one here. Very precise here, take it slowly. It's like one of those, um, alpha oh, bell. Oh yeah. It's, it's like one of, yeah, if you miss it, that happens. So it's, think of it like as one of those uh, ring games where you have to, um, to, to move a ring around. You have to move your your stick around that ring or some sort of, sh a ring around a shape, a metal shape as you, you do other things, but you have to do it without touching it, so. Which makes it quite interesting. I'll just start over here and see if that makes a difference. Be very, very careful. Oh, come on! I'll try and move a bit quicker, maybe. It was too slow. There we go. And now the network is back online. So, we can finally talk to the Aurora units. So, let's go and finally start our plan. First of all, we need to get back out through this way, of course. Actually, is there another way to go here? I think, um... I've never seen somewhere you can use a plasma beam or something, but uh, maybe I'm thinking wrong. Yeah, I am. Okay, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Okay, so, with the network back online, we can talk to the Aurora unit. But before you do that, scan them for the logbook. Aurora Unit 217, organic supercomputer in charge of maintaining Skytown. Aurora Unit 217 was originally built to support GF Naval Base De Demeter, but was assigned to Skytown Base shortly after the Treaty of Alicia was signed 14 years ago. 217 has served admirably in its role as Skytown Administrator. Vast amounts of tactical intel have been delivered from Skytown under AU-217, along with valuable stellar and interstellar research data. It has interfaced well with the Elysian mechanoids, and enjoys a productive working arrangement with them. So yeah, that's a, a very missable Galactic Federation scan, so make sure you get it. Now, let's go and talk with the Aurora units. Thank you, Samus. We have restored our connection to Skytown's network. Now we can execute our plan to destroy the Leviathan. We must first disable the Leviathan's protective shield. Unfortunately, the generator for this shield is hidden beneath the dense clouds of Elysia, and so is impossible to reach directly. As an alternative to destroying the generator, we have calculated that a massive thermonuclear explosion would likely destroy the shield itself. This facility possesses the components to create such a device. We would like you to build this device and drop it on the Leviathan shield. Unfortunately, 
The components are too large for you to lift unaided. You will need assistance to move and assemble them. There is a Federation landing site far to the east of Skytown. You will be able to find something to help you there. We will upload the current map data of this area to your suit. This should help you get started. Good luck, Samus. And we have the map station built in. We've only actually seen one map station in this entire game so far, which is kind of surprising, really. But yeah. Now we have the map, we can see that there's a ship landing site over here. But we also have a area to a, a sky tram of sorts. Interesting. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and um, move along that way. So, our objective now is to go to the other side of Skytown and start our plan to destroy the seed. Before I do that though, I want to go back into the main hall here. Because you may have noticed earlier that there are plasma beam stuff here. If we shoot these and then destroy the stuff behind. Oh, that's nice. There's nothing really there, huh? I thought there was something more behind, but apparently not. Okay. Well, um, never mind then. Well, there's some extra goodies there. I guess that's what the thing behind there really was. <laughs> Oops. Oh well, anyway. We want to head over towards um, the um, spire now because that's the route of progression we need to take. Okay, so now we're on the spire. Ship status update. Auto repair functions complete. Ship is ready for use. That is a very well timed update, but we want to go over this way because we don't really need to leave Sky Town at all. It's just the case of the fact that, well, the place we need to go is um, along this path. So we're going to go back to this room right here. So, you remember this door right here? Now we have the plasma beam, we can finally destroy it. So here we go, we can finally make progress along here. We have finally obtained the means, we have finally cracked the code and be able to enter this door. Let's go beyond this door and go towards the next part of Skytown. Oh, come on! Wow! You absolute trolls! You give us the item to get past that door that you teased us earlier, and then you give us another blockage straight after that. Of course. Well, we don't really have much choice to go back through here and proceed onwards. But while we're in here, we can... Now with the plasma beam, we can get the upgrade that's in this room. So I'm just going to do just that. Not that it's much of an upgrade, but... <laughs> So yeah, now we have the plasma beam, we can melt this right here. Which will um, do something. Not much in the short term, but now, obviously we've opened this door from that side. What we want to do actually is to shoot this right here, because this was uncovering a um, hatchway of sorts. So yeah, we can get into this with the morph ball. And roll through this tube if Samus's morph ball will actually struggle up the hill. And there we go. Roll all the way to the end of this. And we have ourselves basically nothing. Like, seriously. Do we really need more ship missiles? I somehow doubt we do. 
But yeah, that was the major upgrade we can obtain in this room. But you might be wondering, if I'm going down this way and this way is a dead end, where else can you go? Well, actually, there is a door over here. We could have actually been here earlier, now I think about it. We also have, a, I believe, yes, you're a data bot, so we have some lore in this room right here. Elite in data doc decoded. Entry alone. In the year 400 of Elysian Reckoning, the time for our chosen creators to leave had arrived. To us, they entrusted the station and its purpose. We were to stand vigil and watch over the station until the time whenever seeking enlightenment arrived. With the departure came one last request from the chosen searcher to continue exploring the skies for the answers to the mysterious planet. We gave her our word and resumed her tireless search. Day after day, we hunted for the answers she desperately sought, but our efforts yielded nothing. We failed. So, if we go proceed on with this point. Samus, the security locks have been engaged on this landing site. This was surely a result of Gore's recent activities. I will unlock this area. Allowing you to command your ship to land. I wanted to scan that bit first, I guess. Anyway, if we go to this point here. Yeah, we've got a bomb slot, so let's uh, bomb it. That will create an additional landing site. And now we can use our command visor to send our ship over here. Okay, so you may be wondering what to do next. Well, the Royal Unit 217 said that we may need to go back to a previous planet to find somewhere to go. You may also remember on Planet Brio that I said that there was a location you really wanted to remember was there for later on. Well, we have the means to melt ice now with the plasma beam, so what do you say we go back there and try it? In the next episode! Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Please share this LP with your friends to, tr to see if they might be interested as well. Thank you for watching and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.